So did you know that in OD17, they've change the way that you do deferred revenue and deferred expenses um, which can catch you by surprise if you're upgrading from an older version um, recently it caught us by surprise because we were upgrading a client from v15 to v17 and they're heavy, heavy users of the deferred revenue um, functionality because they deal in memberships for their club so what's changed let's take so the main difference is that in the prior versions, there was this concept of deferred revenue models. And it was in here that we would establish the number of period recognitions, the accounts that things needed to, to sort of debit and credit, um, and the basic defaults. And you could do this by model. Now, one of the things that it did lack, although it has pro rata, temporis <laughs> um, if you are in a country where the um, calendar year is not January to December or you want to keep your pro rata within your calendar year then it didn't quite work for you because it was just there were some assumptions made in the setup um, so then what we would have to do is we would have to set up our automated actions and within our automated actions what that was doing was it was actually figuring out the pro rata to figure out how many periods were left until the end of the year so it was you know it was a bit it worked but it was a bit complex so what changed well it's made a lot better and a lot easier but if you're upgrading you need to know because you need to change some things so let's go and have a look at that So here we are in V17 and you'll notice that if you look for those deferred revenue models, they are gone. They are no longer there for neither expense nor revenue. It's the same, same, but different. Um, so they're just not there. They're gone. Poof. Disappeared. Um, so what have we got instead? Well, if you go to settings and go down to accounting... And if we do a little search here, it might be a little bit easier. There's now, the defaults are now set up sort of as a global setting throughout the system um, under the accounting settings. Uh, so here we set up the default journal, the, the deferred expenses and revenue is gonna go to the accounts that are gonna get debited or credited with the deferred revenue expense. And then, how you want those entries to be generated. Do you want to wait and then sort of manually group them and trigger them? Or do you want to just do it on the validation of either your vendor bill or on the validation of your sales invoice? So uh, this particular client does it on the validation. And then computation is great so this is that pro rata thing right so you just want equal per, by month so it doesn't matter if you, it's like part way through the month whatever just count it by month or based on days so you know if it's the middle of the month that first month you know will be partial um so we have it based on days because we like to be accurate <laughs> okay so then how it works is if you actually go to the customer invoice now let's change that to invoice. What you will find is within there, there is now a start and end date. So if I choose customer here and I stick in an invoice date, say we're raising an invoice now. If I put in my membership, you now have two dates. You have a start date and an end date, and this is for the deferred revenue, and it will be the same on the purchase side. So in this instance, we want 
we can choose basically whereas before you couldn't choose you had to have like calculations flying about so here we can say well the start of this membership is actually between now and sort of the end of our financial hit year here in australia which is june okay and then let's put a price in there so say it was 200 a month let's put in some gst okay so now when i come to confirm this invoice it automatically goes and creates my deferred entries for me but based on the start end date on the actual line so if you've got multiple lines you could quite conceivably have different start end dates for the different revenues or the different expenses um, which is also good because I can imagine on the um, purchase side you might end up with say an insurance um, invoice that is for 12 months and then you have maybe stamp duty and GST and stuff and you, you don't pro rata and defer those elements they're just one-off charges so I like that that's good so let's go to deferred entries and we can see that it's already sort of created the entries in the months in which they need to be um, recognized um, and it does it prorated by day so some some months have 30 days some months have 31 some months 28 20 you know the deal um, so that's it that's the exciting bit so what can you do in preparation if you if you're upgrading well First of all, before you do the upgrade, just review everything that you've already posted in terms of deferrals and where they're all sitting, the ins and outs. Because what the what Odoo does as well is it doesn't po it'll post them when they're due. So if we could go to the um, deferred revenue, uh, let's have a look at the journal entries in here. Let's take off that posted. You can see here that all of these are um, not posted yet. And that's because it's been calculated as part of the deferred entry calculation. And this was actually migrated from the old version, um, but it's not due to be posted yet because that month hasn't hit. So it will continue to do that, but just make sure you're nice and tidy going into your new version you don't have any sort of customer invoices that haven't been posted yet um, make sure that that's all nice and clean all done so any prior invoices are sort of posted done and dusted and then you're fresh going into 17 with new invoices and new ways and doing things so yeah that is the new model for deferred revenue and expenses what do you think i think it's really cool actually um but yeah a little bit of a gotcha on upgrades but not a bad one See you next time.